Okay, I'm ready for today's show. Looking oh. fly. Oh, great. We need a fashion consultant. This is not okay. What? What's wrong? Well, good thing. So today, guess what? We have Rachel coming on. Yes! Hey, brave girl. How you do the things that you do? Welcome to the Brave Talk Show, the show for brave women craving the connection that comes with real conversation about struggles, concern, and TMI details we face every day. We have an episode every week, so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be brave with us. We are your hosts, Vanessa. Teresa. I'm Robin. And I'm Brittany. And so today, we're actually going to be talking about dressing for your body type. But first, we're going to start with our hot topic. Today's a fun one. It's a little bit different. Are you guys ready? What is one of your pet peeves? I only have one, you guys. What? I can only pick. I, just do I only can pick one. I got a whole bunch. <laughs> yep, we got to keep it to two minutes. Timer. Yes. All right, let's go. Okay, so mine start. is when you're in a retail store and you've been waiting in line. There's like a long line, right? <laughs> Usually, I always have like 10 million kids with me and tell them to <laughs> shut up and be quiet and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I get up and it's my turn. And then the assistant is like hold for a second and then answers the phone and is like yeah can I hold can I help you and I'm like no like I've been <laughs> waiting for 20 minutes and it's finally my turn and that person just barely picked up the phone dialed the number and you answer it and you're helping them right now yeah <laughs> you see oh, I've got I four hate kids yeah. oh my gosh mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, all right here. for me um right now especially this last year and a half has it been yeah it's been like I guess a little over a year seeing somebody by themselves walking down the street with their mask on. Mm -mm. I just don't get it. It's like, do you think that there's COVID particles like floating in the air? Do you think that like the people that are like the planes that are coming by and spraying the sky or spraying COVID onto us or something? Like what the heck is going on here? Like it's supposed to be about like communicating with the other people, but there's nobody <laughs> around you. Like I don't understand that it drives me bonkers. Or when they were exercising. Oh my God. I'm like, we're in nature. You are next to yeah. no one. Take right. off your mask. I get it at the gym. I yeah. get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, like, outdoor. Hiking, hiking yeah. like, out. I can see you way over there by yourself hiking, and there's that mask. You're going to die. You're going to, you need oxygen. Carbon monoxide poisoning. I know. Yeah. Absolutely drive me bonkers. Mm -hmm. Me too. All I right. love this pet peeve. <laughs> this is great. I know, this is really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Vanessa. Mine. I, I don't like lies. Like, but the thing that's so funny is I feel like I'm a good liar, though. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny how we justify it in ourselves, but like can't stand it in I others? Do. Yeah. I feel like I can get away with so many things, but I don't like when people lie to me. I would rather be like, hey, like, I'm an understanding person. Just tell me. I'm good. Like, yeah. don't lie. Yeah. So that's me. Yeah. yeah. Do you call people out when they lie? Yeah. And it feels like it stick with me. Like, it really changed my opinion about the person. Especially yeah. when it's something so small. Like, I would, like, I just, it's like, oh, yeah, I don't see you the same. Yeah. It's so bad, though. Yeah. I, need, I need to do better, but. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they I feel yeah. yeah. Um, random, but when my cute husband will volunteer to do the dishes, like, <laughs> love you, such a sweetie. But he leaves the water in the pan. Like, he'll, he'll, like, clean up dinner, put everything away, and then, like, it'll be, like, a pan with, like, food in it, and he puts it in the sink and fills it to the top with water. So then it's, like, spaghetti water. <laughs> so and he like, just leaves it, and I'm like, you dump it out. But, he, you know, he, he leaves it. Like, he's like, it's got to soak. I'm like, no. Like, rinse out the food first, and then let it soak, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, am I validated here? You are yes. validated. Yes. yes. Definitely. You have to is. rinse the food out first. Yes. If you're going to yes. soak. Yes. I agree. Okay. Okay, and we have our guest, Rachel, and we want you to share your pet peeve. It's hard to pick one, but do not touch my charging cords. Like, Ooh. you touch my charging cords, yeah. you are dead to me. Yes. Like, like, yes. My kids all the time, they'll, like, sneak in and clutch it and, like, run away. And then, oh. And even, like, where I'm more on vacation and I can't find it, I'm like, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vacation yeah. No over. Point. No and more Hawaii. Pack it yeah. up. You gotta go home. I don't know where my charging cord is. This is too much chaos. For yeah. Me. I love so, that. So I actually I feel that. that. I actually felt that one. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's close to home. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Oh, I love I love it. I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I know we can talk about pet peeves yep. all day because we have yep. tons of it. But I am so excited to welcome our guest that we have today. Uh, it's like my friend, Rachel Bagley. She is the voice behind Cardigan Empire, a blog, YouTube channel, and Instagram feed dedicated to embracing body types and finding attainable beauty. An M MBA graduate, she believes in Outfitting via formula and statistic in addition to colors and trends. She embraces the title fashion 
Jiminy Cricket, <laughs> and has applied her skill as one of the anthropology's top personal wow. stylists, a college fashion profit professor, and a consultant to hundreds of men, women, and businesses. She is a wife, a mother to four children, and she dressed my husband. So, wow. <laughs> welcome our guest, Rachel. Wow. Rachel! <laughs> you are big time. Oh, yeah. You know, it's been a fun journey. I really enjoyed where what has taken me here and all the you know paths along the way that we've meandered along. How did you get here? Well, you know, I started going to school in business. My dad wanted me to go to computer science, but I did not have enough Microsoft t-shirts or cargo shorts. To me, so I, love I that. said, how about business? Does that yeah. sound like important enough for you? So I went to school for business and I got my MBA and I was working part-time for anthropology because I needed a discount, right? Right, so yeah. My yeah. And I had quit my job because I didn't want to travel between states and things like that. And while I was, you know, kind of in between jobs, they said, hey, well, why don't you come help us launch this personal styling program? It was so fun. I love spending time with women in the fitting rooms. I absolutely adored the whole process. But I was also kind of dealing with my own personal demons at the time. Like I had been dealing with infertility. Mm -hmm. And so I was really mad at my body. And I was yeah. kind of mad at like, I'm like, you're broken and you can't make babies. And mm -hmm. I don't like how you look. And you know what? how we all do that. Internally, mm -hmm. we do that kind of self-talk. And then I was watching other women in the fitting rooms looking at themselves. Like, I'd put together the most amazing outfit, and I could see that my work was, you know, on point. Yeah. <laughs> and they would just go up there, and at first they'd be, like, super happy, and then they'd start being like, oh, well, what about, what about this? Or what start about that? At like, it. just picking yeah. at it. Like, you're, you become disembodied body parts, right? Yes. And you're just, like, this floating, like, collection of things. And I'm like, no, you're a whole amazing person, right? Yeah. So when I started doing that, and I, I, I did eventually adopt, and we had children, and mm. I wanted more, you know, of a flexible schedule I started putting together cardigan empire I started writing about my own experience with clothing and you know doing my own research and then it just kind of all grew from there wow, wow. it's been a fun process wow. how many Not years what I was it? so uh, I started cardigan empire in about 2009 okay so yeah. it's been I'm old no, yeah, I feel like I'm 12 years ago. Media, oh. like, I've got like a You're tissue. the OG. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> so, and then I, cool. we love YouTube in my family. We're big YouTubers ourselves. Yes. So, you have a YouTube channel too. Did I you do. start that in 2009 also, or you know, when did that come YouTube along? The channel came a little bit later. I think we did that right after I had my son in 2015. So, that was a little bit later. We started with blogging and then YouTube, and then you know, still do Instagram and now I do some like commercial, uh, like I work with some TV shows like your yeah. husband who's absolutely charming and uh, it's it's really been a great, I love all my clients, like you get to be best friends with these women yeah. and I really have grown a lot of respect just for the process that we're all going through. Yeah. And you've and just got four new clients. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> What's been your client that you're like, oh my gosh, like mm. celebrity or like so excited that you like got to work with that client? Mm. Oh gosh, so many. I mean, I love working with Brooke Walker. She's absolutely adorable. Yeah. And she's like, she's all about color. So many of my clients are like, <laughs> Well, I just really like neutrals, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll love Brittany. She loves color. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what? You want to do color? Can we do red and pink together? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Oh, so, I love that. And all my clients, like, I feel like, you know, my hardest client, do you want to know who my hardest client is, is my husband. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That man is the pickiest man alive. But he picked me, so I always be like, oh, uh, yeah. you have he good had, taste. Had, yes. You have good taste, but seriously. Yeah, so. I love that. That's awesome. So where do you start? So there's a client, they come to you, what do you look at? Where? So what I usually start with with all my clients is putting together kind of their custom fashion profile. So that's your body type, your coloring, your signature style, your lifestyle. And that's not to give you a box like, do not cross the lines. These are your boundaries. It's more just to say like, you already have to make 30,000 decisions a day. Let's take a little of the guesswork out of this. So really just understanding what you're working with, not knowing, knowing that you can violate the rules, quote unquote, at any time, but knowing that this is probably what's gonna work best for your body. So when you walk into a store, you can eliminate 80% of it. Mm -hmm. So you can have a smaller closet. So that you can waste less money. All of those kinds of things are really important. Yeah, I need that. Well, I the, the, like that. Like for me, I think, <laughs> gray looks terrible on me and so now I just avoid all gray in the right. store and that it does it eliminates a lot of right. options you don't like, have to no, sit there and you know wonder or like when they've got a rack of t-shirts and it comes in like 15 different colors and you're sitting there like this or this yeah. or this it's like just you like know. no I know this is my right you my, have your palette zone right mm -hmm. And right. it's like if you find something you totally love and it's not quote unquote in your genre, you can know that. 
And you know, I love it enough that I'm going to break the rules for this one, yeah. right? Yeah. So it just gives you a lot of freedom in thinking about, you know, like what's going to functionally work best for you. And you said coloring. What is the yeah. what does that mean? So coloring and plume flexion is actually one of my favorite topics. It's like kind of like my golden child. <laughs> um, I love color because it's such an easy way to make a high impact, right? So everybody has different colors based on you know their genetics, like how much warmth or cool they have in their skin, how much like melatonin and all those kinds of things. They put together a unique, you know, composite on your face. And so you're looking at like your eye color, you're looking at your skin color and your hair color. And in the end, you want colors that bring out the most range in your hair. So you're, if you have the wrong color in, like it kind of looks flat. You don't have yeah. as many dimensions and things. If see? you have the wrong color just on, your things. eyes will look more like gray or, you know, just like you won't see all the individual like yellows and golds or greens and things like that. Oh. Um, and when you have the right color on with your skin, it's like the ultimate complexion cleanser, right? Like I have dark shadows under my eyes, like since a baby. Like I think I grew, like was born <laughs> with like dark circles under my eyes. And when I have on the wrong color, they become a lot out. more pronounced. Mm -hmm. And when you have on the right color, it makes everything just feel a little more uniform, a little more smooth. And not that we need to be perfect, but if you can like have one way to make life easier so you're not like putting on extra mm -hmm. foundation or anything like that oh, to add to yeah. your confidence, the better, right? Wow. I and love it's cheap. that. Like good colors do not cost more, right? Yeah. Good colors are like available to everyone. It's very democratic. Yeah. Would you give us a quick little yeah, color? Not, yeah, like what would be our our yeah. good colors for us? Oh, for, for sure. Us. So Start with Brittany right there. Starting off with Brittany. Brittany yeah. obviously looks fantastic and bright, strong colors. And you can see she's like got a little bit of a darker tone underneath mm. in her hair. Show the people, you were Brittany. You probably blonde as a child, but a darkened in puberty, right? But you have like okay, a Okay, my secret's out. <laughs> <laughs> she's a fake. <laughs> had to be born albino to stay blonde <laughs> right 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 yeah. and, <laughs> and you, like you have beautiful yeah. eyes you have like a lot of different like colors in your hazel and things like that and you can pull off this strong color so i would probably say you're like a clear spring mm -hmm. which clear spring, mm -hmm. spring it's like there's four different seasons and spring is warm but it's bordering into that like stronger winter season and so it has a little warmth to the undertones but it's really powerful it's really bold like the grass greens and the fuchsia pink Pinks, mm. and probably not as many like muted colors like muted colors like the grays Gray. and like the mm. and fleshy tones like where you're like super peachy you know like oh, those yeah. sort of things like yeah. the makeup kind of tones that like really mm -hmm. washes, it washes you out. me out right yeah. so we want those colors that can stand up to the intensity of your complexion and that's really what we're doing is we're mirroring what already exists there right. so, so if i were um, to go to pinterest mm -hmm. and just type in like spring wardrobe capsule or something like that or spring Clear spring yeah, would it bring up, or? yeah, would it bring up spring fashion oh, yeah. or yeah. would it bring the well, spring I color palette? Well, I clear spring clear because spring. it's going to be, clear spring. because there are three different types of spring. You have warm spring, you have light spring, and you have clear spring. So warm springs might like have red hair. Light springs, they're usually like, they don't have as much pigmentation in their eyes and things like that. So they don't have as much um, power to work with in their colors. Okay. So I would type in clear spring and you can write capsule wardrobe and tons of things are gonna come out. Mm. This, this is like a is like science. A I'm excited. excited. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait for my turn. People call things like soft winter. Like, there's little differences, but it's all the same thing. This it's based so on the great. Color Me Beautiful system, and you know, mm -hmm. just I didn't know this was such a right, science. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like, we're just too old. In the 1980s, this was huge, and everybody knew their season. We're just resurrecting. Yeah, okay. okay. We're okay. Old again. Early on in the show, mm -hmm. so it should have been season know. one since I didn't look like a goon the last four episodes. <laughs> well, that Jeez. explains why I looked so awful in the 90s. Like I clearly didn't understand my my color. Your season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you, the good thing about being in your like teens and 20s is your complexion and everything is already on point. Youth is make, already, youth makes up for everything else. Yeah, and, yeah. And, it's just like, and plus it's just like, oh, it's cute. You know, like yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever, it's fun. I'm glad you had fun. Like I look at old pictures of myself, even in my 20s and I'm like, you look like you were having fun. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. That's right? what I think yeah. of the kids yeah. these days with their mom jeans, like that are up, they're like ankle length mom jeans that are they're doing right well, now. And then, then like, they okay, put on their fun. tall socks. The socks and their dad and jeans. And their dad shoes. Yeah, with the big old like clunky. You look like you're having fun. Have a good time Yeah. that. And they pay like two hundred dollars for those shoes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like you can have my dad's free. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're available. So I mean, they're just yeah. Even. yeah. And though, like, even though you guys, Robin and Brittany, are both blondes, uh -huh. you definitely have different complexions. Okay. I'm a blonde. Like, not a clear oh, spring. Totally, I'm a new blonde. You're, you're, I was brown hair in the last I know. season. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, know. I can tell you've got like pretty darker undertones, yeah. but you've got more warmth in your coloring maybe Ooh. than Brittany okay. does. I would say that you're probably in the soft autumn category. Like 
You've got some blue, but it's like a light hazel. <laughs> and you've got like pretty peachy undertones in your skin. So you can pull off some of those warmer tones that wash Brittany out. Okay. You can pull them off. So like when she's getting rid of all that stuff out of her closet, you can be like. Oh, except her bite size won't fit on my leg. <laughs> we can just the yeah. chest area. I can patch them together. Yeah. Yeah. Just the chest area. Yes. Where is somebody like Teresa has way more like contrast in her features. Like she's yeah. got really fair, pretty skin and she's got this gorgeous dark hair and these dark brown eyes. And so she's going to be more in the deep category where she can pull off like those really dark, deep colors. Like for me, sometimes when I get like too much black in the, you know, coloring of my clothing, then I'm like, oh, I feel like overweighted. Whereas she has the contrast to pull it off, right? Okay. Whereas when we put her in something that's like too pastel, like too tinted, it just can't stand up to her, right? Yeah. Like she has way too much pigmentation. She's more in our winter season i would probably say in the deep winter because you can pull off some of the warm tones which a lot of in the summertime can. when i get a tan yes definitely more autumn but well, yeah this it, is yeah. clearly winter <laughs> i am very white right now it, i'm whiter on this camera though i'm letting you know i'm not as white as what i look like <laughs> on the camera. But these right. lights are bright camera white is a totally different you're like they're messing me up right now not that white yeah. people yeah. <laughs> right and at that it does make a difference like the amount of tan that you get in the summer like you can always pull off more when you have a tan. Mm -hmm. So that's the time to experiment I knew with that colors. Was true. In the winter, <laughs> that's when we have to be a little bit more judgy on like which colors we're gonna put on. Yeah. But in the summer, it's just like I have a tan. I can wear whatever I feel yeah. like. You, you know, can't like, make this look bad. No, I, got this. I got this. Whereas somebody like Vanessa, she has like these warm golden mocha undertones in her skin and like Same. deep dark eyes, and she can pull off like. These like warm, like she's probably in the deep autumn category where it's like just like golden like undertones in her skin. But she actually doesn't have as much contrast in her features as somebody like Teresa does, right? Yeah. So it's just all a little bit different because like there's less contrast between her hair and her eyes and her skin and all that kind of combo. So all that kind of plays together in putting together what wow. works on you. And mm -hmm. like I said, like one, the color types are always just a starting point. Mm -hmm. So you're going to discover because every person's unique. I mean, they're used to only be four categories and I don't know if you guys have noticed but there aren't four types of people out there walking around <laughs> yeah. yeah and so now there's 12 which makes it better but still like make it a self-discovery so like if you feel like oh I feel like adopting some of the deep autumn like when especially when I'm you know tanner in the summer you can totally do that so just so deep that, autumn and then which winter primary is deep winter and deep then you can deep winter deep, deep autumn winter. during deep the autumn. summer deep winter deep autumn so and I'll don't worry text me and I'll like send you yeah. all your color sheets she is now so, our yeah. personal stylist <laughs> I know I know I think my the day. Of stylist Film of the brave day. women. I, I I adopt that title with <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. I would okay. like a badger medal to yeah. go. Yeah, so we can do body that. types. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of the question we got was body types. And right. Think, me, I'm like, like I think even Robin can really big boobs. Oh yeah. How do you, because I feel like that's my thing. Like I know a good bra helps. Oh for sure. But how do you dress a body with somebody? Me and Teresa asked this. I all feel the time. like that's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> a big <laughs> problem. People who follow me know that I just got a breast reduction, so I went down like several cup sizes. And you're but, still. And I'm still. I'm like, yeah. I woke up. I'm like, they're still too big. Like I wanted to go smaller, but it. At least I think it's limited limited what I can wear. Yeah. Like I cannot wear anything that buttons up. Yeah. I can't wear any dress that buttons up because it doesn't it's, fit. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like I'm wearing a tent. So like yeah. I One of my, my sister in law said that she can't wear some of the things that I can because she said that she can go from classy to trashy, she said, real quick. Yeah. because of her chest. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Right. Right. That was a lot of the question we got. Was, you know yeah, what? Boobs. Yeah. boobs are a big deal. And I can speak to this for some level because most women, for starters, go through about nine different cup sizes throughout their life. Mm -hmm. Just based on hormones, weight gain, having Pregnancy. babies, postpartum, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. And it's like, I've had babies and I'm like, yes, like this is just like, I've never had this before. This is amazing. And now I shop on my, you know, chest every day with my push-up bra, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. and you know what? It's all about different opportunities but the biggest thing I can tell you is when you have a larger area that you want to clothe you want to break it into pieces now I you guys have kids so when your kids are eating something and they don't want to eat it so they cut it into smaller pieces and then they're like see I ate a whole bunch like look at all this spread it around the plate spread it around. <laughs> and that's what we can do with our own body type so when you segment it then it's just like 
it doesn't become like the turtleneck buffet where it's like there's all this, right? Like uh -huh. when you put on a turtleneck, I don't know if you guys, when you have big boobs, like you put on a turtleneck and it's just like so all out there, like, yep. so all boobs. of this, right? Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to, like you said, you know, feel like you're going to trashy. Like, right. so you can do like a, you know, a minimal V-neck, but even if you don't want to do a V-neck, even doing something like a jacket on top okay. or a cardigan on top, because it's like, now here's a section, now here's a section, yeah. now here's a section. Okay. And so when your eye is visually looking at that, it makes it appear like there's less to deal oh. with and it kind of balances it out. Whereas when we like put it out there in one big section, it's like, I don't know, see, I'm a booty girl. That's where, you know, like my heft lies. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you will never see me walking around in a pair of leggings with no pockets on them unless I'm headed to the gym, right? Okay, because yeah. it's just like, we do not need all of this. Like, that's a lot of elephant to digest. All <laughs> so you say, <laughs> so we got to like, we got to have the back. Is that all you like, back there, girl? Yeah, it's all me. It's all me. I have big boobs and big butt. So I'm just like, I'm just always out hourglass. there. I'm oh. just out there. Well, and it's hard. And it's just finding things like things that are stretch ready, right? Like yeah. I said, like buttons are super hard. There yeah. are like specific products out there that do offer some options, but overall it's usually better to just go something with that's gonna stretch. And you can go a little little less um, uh, fitted, but you want to get something that's it's like a liquid fabric. Like the dress that Teresa's wearing, you know, like where it's gonna move okay. when you move. Okay. So when you have on something that. that's like a little bit floaty, that's gonna give the appearance of, you know, a little bit more movement. Whereas like when you put it in something that's really stiff and structured, it's gonna uh -huh. look like a tent and okay. boxy. Oh, so wow. all of those things are gonna help. And really it's just about knowing the confidence and knowing, you know, like it also applies to, you know, like your torso, all those things. Right. It's kind of the same methodology, yeah. just putting it all together. So opposite, mm -hmm. no, no assets up here. <laughs> right, Okay. Yes. So I'm trying to like, Put some ruffles yeah, and things like that, decorate. right? So right. anything you else? Decorations to it. Accessories. Like, <laughs> people, when you have, like, you don't decorate what already speaks for itself, right? Like, so if you already got like a nice little curve going on up here, you just want to, you know, basically keep it kind of clean, kind of streamlined, right? Because right. it's its own statement. Whereas when you don't have as much, that's when you can add ruffles. That's when you can add like a little ruching. Let's, mm -hmm. A little decoration is totally fine on that. Like I'm never going to decorate, you know, like put some ruffles around my boots. hips on my no. booty. That's not going to happen. <laughs> no. no. It's not, not going to happen. But I can decorate up here a little bit more. And it's just knowing. And like somebody like Vanessa, if you feel like you've got it on both ends, like just always accenting that waist. Like her cute dress, like how it comes in right here. Mm -hmm. Like when you've got tailoring. That way we know like, you know, we're just showing off like what's already existing. We're not trying to hide anything. We're not trying to shame anything. It's just like, and we just want to be functional. Right. I mean, overall, like what I want is just to be able to sit down and know that my pants aren't going to like ride down in the back, that I can, just, you know, walk around and not feel like, you know, my shirt's going to, you know, come into yeah. a crop top. Like all of those kinds of things, that's first and foremost what we want. And usually when we hit the functional side of it, then we also look good doing it too. Yeah. I want that I confidence. That. Yeah. I love that. What were some of the other questions? I know somebody resonated with me on the short torso. That's I have a really one. short torso, and I remember short that question was asked. Short torso, broad shoulder, and not looking yeah. busty. I think we did the busty, but yeah, short torso. Short torso. So short torso, like a lot of what people don't think about when they're looking at their body type is the um, division between your legs and your torso, right? And so one way that you can even, because some people aren't even self-aware enough to know what's going on there. So you look at the widest part of your hips or wherever the widest part is, you measure from your feet to the widest part of your hips or your booty or like people have different like hip drops and things like that. So it's just mm. the widest part on the bottom half. And then you measure from that same section to the top of your head. And if it's a lot longer on one of those edges, then you have a short torso and long legs or short legs and long torso. So if you have a short torso, what we want to do is we want to extend it, right? We want to make Should it as I stand long up? as possible. Yeah, yeah you, you can stand up. Stand up, girl. Stand up. What about my mom? <clears throat> just carry it with you. Just Hold it in your hand. hand. When you're looking at a short torso, you don't necessarily want to tuck in all the time. We like want to create. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to. We want to make sure that we're hitting about the middle of the crotch line of your pants. So this is going to help extend. But one other trick that you can add to it is even if you wanted to wear a jacket or a cardigan in Something the winter longer. that comes down longer, yeah. then you still get your leg line, but it's also extending through here. The other oh. things you can do are like the longer you wear, wherever you wear the sleeve line to, 
that's what's gonna make the biggest impact. So if you have your sleeve line way up here, that's gonna make you appear broader and chestier and like a little bit shorter. Hmm. Whereas you lengthen the line of the arm, then that's gonna help elongate too. So it's basically drawing out the lines. You can like put longer necklaces, basically anything that draws that vertical line on the top half is what's gonna so make a big difference. So you can see like the difference if I tuck this up. But it looks like the, high, the high waistline, <laughs> though, is uh, is in right now to go yeah, with the yeah. high waistline. Well, Isn't you know it kind of? You can still wear the high waistline okay. because high waistline is awesome because it gives us like support for the soft, delicious center. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody that their delicious nougat has to come out over the top, right? But you can still just like wear it down over the top. So and yeah, the other thing yeah. is looking at petite tops and things no, like that. That will make a big difference for you. Too. So yeah. actually, a lot of questions asked were, how do you hide the mom pooch? Oh, oh, that's a mm. nice one. one. Okay, can we just normalize the mom pooch? Yeah. Yes. I agree yes. Yes. Very yes. normal. Yes. Like, I, and I don't even care. <laughs> I had a mom pooch. I'm like a long time mom, mom bod, like newer mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. The mom bod was there appreciate before it. I ever had Let's children. appreciate it. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's just realizing that it's totally normal and we don't need to shame our bodies. but. At the same time, I don't know how many of you guys have been corseted in where you're sitting down and like part oh. of your mom body is coming over the top and part of it's going down yeah. in the kangaroo pouch and you're like, I'm gonna die. So yes. I really do love like a higher rise pant. And what you wanna do is you wanna come to the highest, like the kind of where the broadest part comes and that's where you wanna put it. So like- So there's no ends, muffin right. top. Right. Right. Because we don't, here, here's the deal. The you don't wanna go too low <laughs> because then our soft delicious center comes out over the top in muffin top, which is very uncomfortable. And we don't wanna go too high because then we get kangaroo pouch. <laughs> like, and nobody yeah. wants either of those situations. So yeah. what you wanna I do totally is like, the I'm sorry. band <laughs> comes across like that widest like top part. Okay. okay. And that's I mean, good lots to know. of people make good jeans. I would say that Jeans are something worth investing in. People will be like, why do I have to spend so much money on jeans? Here's the deal. You're fitting your hips, you're fitting your thighs, you're fitting your crotch, you're fitting your waist. Like, we are fitting a lot of dimensions. This is couture, you know, tailoring. <laughs> yeah. So it's worth spending at least like $100 on a pair of jeans because mm. you're gonna get your cost per wear out of them. Right? So do you have a favorite sure. brand that oh, you I store? Love, in store? I love, yeah. I love Madewell jeans are great for a lot of people. Madewell, um, that's a brand name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Madewell is a store, they've got a lot and they've got petites, they've got talls. I mean, but it really just depends if you're super curvy on the bottom half, Loft has really great stuff. Um, I mean, there are tons of like, designer jeans from mother to, I mean, and you can get great Levi's jeans, but it's gonna have less stretch. And so it's kind of a personal thing. Okay. Like I like my jeans to have like the right amount of stretch and the right amount of <laughs> stiff and it's, you gotta kind of try them on. I don't own not one pair of jeans. <gasps> That's okay. Why? Because Your I have legs? really skinny legs and a really, I cannot find any yeah. that fit. So I'll right. get one around here and then it's just parachute. Yeah. And Which those are in style so, right now. So I wear jeggings all the time. Right, They're jeggings just are fine. Yeah. So that's my thing too. My yeah. hips, my butt is big, mm -hmm. but I have small thighs and widths. So like for me, like jeans, I have, you know, it sounds funny. I was at Walmart and my friend, she's a little bit bigger. And she's like, go to Walmart, buy this pair of jeans. And it actually is like the only pair of jeans wow. I own that fit me. Oh, you me. gotta follow. You gotta, when people give you a tip on yeah. jeans, you hop on And that. I went and I got a pair and I was like, this is the best pair of jeans I've ever like had. And you know what? Walmart. The nice yeah. thing about <laughs> jeans <laughs> is they don't typically change that much from season to season. Yeah. So like once you know your cut, they're gonna make different washes or they're gonna like add some distressing, but it's gonna be basically the same thing. Yeah. Right? Go back and buy five. Yeah, pair you can go everything. back and you can <laughs> continue. The other thing that you like can do to like, reduce your like overall cost, you can buy them secondhand. Because what I usually do with my clients, I'll give you all the secrets, yes. is I take them to Nordstrom because they're gonna have the greatest variety and like all the sizes there. Mm -hmm. And we try on at least 20 pairs of jeans. This is hard work, you know, like we try it on, we do it, we do our work. I saw it, I, yeah. I did, it was, it was a lot of work. And once you've done that, then you're like, okay, like I know that this is my favorite cut of jean. I know that this is what works for me. So then if I wanna go on Poshmark or if I wanna go on eBay and I wanna buy them used because somebody bought them and you know, decided they didn't need them, then I'm confident in doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can go to Nordstrom Rack or wherever is gonna have them secondhand, because I have no problem like buying something that somebody else already wore. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want you to settle. That's yeah. the biggest thing is like, put the work in so, because especially with jeans, that's something we come back to over and over again. Just never settle. Yeah. And you should try Good American too. I did. You did. And I got a pair. Not, I, I love those too. Amazing. So <laughs> anyways, but yeah, like there are tons of options out there and just do your research on your own body, like invest in yourself because you don't have to fit into anybody else's different, you know, favorite pair of jeans, yeah. right? Like every single person here is gonna have a different favorite and that's totally fine. That's what I noticed too. I was trying to like buy the styling jeans and I was just like, this is not working. I would just give them 
on to my sister. Oh, and then yeah. finally, when I like invested, like I literally spent a hundred dollar in a pair of jeans, and I'm like, oh, I used to not have jeans either. So then yeah. I went. Great American was the first one I bought, mm -hmm. and I was like. Okay. Yeah, like get I can do right? this. Yeah, and it's not like every single pair of jeans in your closet. Like I have a pair of jeans yeah. that I work in, and I have a pair of jeans that like when I'm going and looking good, you know yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. You only but need a few pair. You only need, and less is always, always, always more. Yeah. Right. Not only because it saves our wallet, but it just saves our brains. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like nobody wants to have to sit there and like look in their closet and being like, okay, Dude. nope, that doesn't fit. No, I don't really like that. No, like. Everything in your closet should be earning its rent. Like yeah. everything should like have that. to pay rent yeah, to exist in your that. closet. And if you're not wearing it, get rid of it. Not because, you know, like I, I, I love minimalism, but just because like it frees up so much space in our brain, right? Yeah. Like it makes life easier. So would you have, is there a number lesson? that you would recommend as far as like how much clothes is two clothes? What's like the ideal amount? Like 10 shirts and 10 pants? So what are we talking about here? So Jeez. in America, we Says have Says the woman who wants his definite <laughs> answer on everything. <laughs> I need mean, like, a structure. It's out. okay. Whatever. I like yeah. closets. Yeah. I like yeah. numbers. So, you know, yeah. I like spreadsheets. So this is totally fine. Number. Um, I usually tell, like in I'm America, we have this funny thing where we can't repeat an outfit for two weeks. Yeah. I don't know where this came from, what? but you can't, no, the people just don't repeat their outfits within two weeks. And different countries don't. don't do that. In uh, Europe, they don't do that. And like, <laughs> it's okay if you repeat the outfit if you don't see the same person, right? And we've all been in quarantine, yeah. but in regular business life, it's like, you know, we can't repeat the outfit within two weeks. So what I do is I usually tell people a 10 item capsule works really well, at mm -hmm. least 10 items if I'm mm -hmm. like going from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. So that's usually like three to four <laughs> pairs of pants, bottoms, like, skirts, tops, whatever, you know, three to four bottoms. Mm -hmm. And then you want about three to four tops and two layers. Okay. So okay. you kind of play and match. and you mix and match it and then um, and people will be like, layers, I only get 10 items and you're making me do layers. Layers are actually really versatile and making the outfit look different and adding texture and like elevating everything just a little hmm. bit. So, yeah. I might and then have accessories a whole and shoes don't come. Well, you like I'm to like, shop, so I that's, your, that's the issue. So my closet is like, I am that person that don't wear something every two weeks because yeah, it's, yeah. I don't do laundry for myself every well, two weeks. Well, and that's totally fine too. So like clothes. different people are gonna have different levels of comfort yeah. on how much variety they right. like and those sort of things. But like as just like a bare minimum, that's what yeah. I would say. My husband's philosophy is anytime because he's kind of a minimalist too, but he loves mm -hmm. to shop. So he, what he does is anytime he buys a new shirt, he the rule is he has to get rid of yeah. an old one. Mm -hmm. I it's wish I could rule. do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I guess I one question that, that I really wanted to be because I it resonates I think with me too. I think emotionally dressing your body, when you dress your body, when you feels right, you, you know, you have feel, more confidence. You, yeah, you feel more yeah. confident. So how do you help people like get into like, like you say, you having like a hard time with your body. Like how do you get people to love right. their body? And you know what? I think it just really comes down to just like, my body is not decorative. And I have to tell myself that all the time. Like when I look in the mirror and if I'm ever doing something, like I'm just like, hold up. You are not a tchotchke, okay? Like nobody's putting you on a shelf. Like you do not exist just to look like some little pretty, you know, thing on the shelf. Like I am here to move, and I am here to empower, I and I am here that. to do things. I love yeah. that. And so when we can remember that we're more than just like something to look at, mm -hmm. and that like our clothing, yes, it's like I love clothing and I love aesthetics and I love beautiful things. But in the end, like I just want to feel like me. Like mm -hmm. my whole goal is to help people match their inside self and their outside self. And everybody's gonna look different, and that's okay. Like yeah. everybody doesn't have to follow the same trends. That's okay. Everybody doesn't have to look the same. Like we don't. We're not more valuable. Like I don't know how many people. Like we've had this talk. I'm like, your clothes don't exist to judge you. Like we're not a better person if we fit into smaller clothes, and a less, you know, a lesser person if we fit into bigger clothes. Like yeah. because you know we can take up as much space as we need to to get the job done, right? Yeah. And like different times of our life, it's gonna vary. Mm -hmm. And people are way harder on themselves, not even comparing themselves to each other. It's comparing yourself to your former self. You're like, I remember when I could do that. Oh, like, I yeah. remember that. Yeah. I remember that. And like, we judge ourselves so according true. to that. But it's an evolving thing. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to tell yourself, okay, I'm not decorative, number one. And I just want to, my clothing exists to serve me. Mm -hmm. Never the other way I around. Love like, that. like yeah. I, I tell my clients, I'm like, oh, those pants don't deserve you. Cast those <laughs> off. Like, those are not good Ooh, enough. I like that. <laughs> that is not, mm, that does not live up to your standard. Mm, to be Ooh, like, that's a really good that. angle. So, to, and I think yeah. when we do that with yeah. our closets, yeah. like reframing it and telling ourselves like, oh yes, like, this is my level, right? Like That's this my, is a, my standard of what my exists butt. to be me, right? Not so that I don't ever like, you know, making people feel like, 
oh, you have to look a certain way or dress this certain trend or be this certain size because it's always just changing. It's always yeah. going to evolve. And being able to accept that things are going to continue changing, that's like number one. And then just like drawing that around yourself and just yeah. realizing that where you are is where you're supposed to be. And there's wow. no questioning that. So. Thank you so Thank much, you. Rachel. So good. Honey. Thank you. And like Thank you. giving us, down. like you literally have taught us so much because yeah. we needed it um, mm -hmm. <laughs> as we are doing this weekly. And so how can people find you from your YouTube? Is it just Cardigan Empire? Yeah, if you go to my Instagram, is at Cardigan Empire. Um, if you go to my website, cardiganempire.com, you can find links to everything from my Facebook to YouTube and everything. Um, YouTube is just youtube.com slash Rachel Bagley. But Rachel spelled weird. It's like reach. Just ask my parents. I'm not sure what was going on there. Last night I texted yes. her. I'm like, is it Rochelle or Rochelle? Yeah. No, or? is it Riackle? Yeah. Like, I don't really know. It's just Rachel. Yeah. It's just, I'm named after an ancestor, so it's a little okay. funny. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much it. for coming you. and blessing us with yes. all your expertise. Oh, thank you guys so much for so having me. It was so fun We would love to do a live with you at some point that on Instagram. That was really fun. So I would love to answer do that. Answer more people's questions. Yeah. I got okay. answers. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining our Brave Conversation. Have some Brave topics you'd like to discuss? Leave your suggestions below and we'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification as well so that you don't miss our next episode. We'll be having a lot more exciting guests in the future. Are you guys ready for more? Click on the next video for more Brave Conversations. See you next week. Hey, brave girl, how you do the things that you do?